25. Thought I'd demonstrate a little bit how we do these uh, chickens. So right now we've got the water at uh, 155 degrees. And we're doing it about 60 seconds. The bigger the chicken, the longer. So 60 is about the max. The smaller chickens you can probably do about 45 seconds. But if you do it the right amount of time, in about uh, 10 seconds or so, your chicken looks like that. No feathers. Well, I'll show you in a second what the chicken plucker does. Chicken's kind of flat spinning. Sometimes these chickens just stay in one location and it's uh, they kind of flat spin, but you can see we just flipped it over. Okay, go ahead and take it, turn it off. So that chicken is feather free. So this is what the chicken looks like. <laughs> perfectly, perfectly uh, clean. So I've been processing away and I've uh, down to my last chicken I got to do today. We kind of got a thunderstorm came in on us and uh, so I had eight that we were able to get through the, uh, you know, the cutting off of the head, the bleed out, the, the scalding, the uh, uh, defeathering, and now we're at the uh, gutting stage. But uh, we don't waste anything, so I keep the legs, I keep the necks, I keep the hearts, the gizzards, and the livers. Hearts, li um, hearts livers, and gizzards uh, go for the dogs. The legs and necks, we're going to make some uh, broth out of that. But here's my uh, chickens that have been processed, and the next step uh, going to be later tonight. I got to come in and put them in the shrink bags. But uh, anyways, this is going pretty well today. It's always nice to be able to come inside and do the second half of this process. So just wanted to show you uh, how this works. And I don't think I talked about this yesterday, but this is the final process after the uh, chickens have been gutted and everything. So they've been uh, plucked, bled, gutted, and uh, now we're ready to put them in shrink bags and let me recommend don't leave the shrink bags outside i meant to show them in the video and i had them sitting up out there in the sun and they kind of shrunk a little bit even though they're not supposed to shrink till they're like 195 degrees but nevertheless they kind of stuck together and i was able to recover them but uh, there's a simple little fixture you can make and this is out of one and a quarter inch uh, pvc and so you get this cross in between, and then you just have short pipes. These are probably only like about six inch, and then you have a 90 degree elbow. And then you have maybe about, uh, I don't know what that is, maybe two foot high. And then I have a cap on the top of that. You can't see because I got the chicken on it. But it's perfect for setting your chickens on here so that you can bag them very easily. So I saw this in another video, and I kind of made my own. I haven't even glued these pipes because they fit together so nicely and I wasn't sure it was the way I wanted it, but it is now. So I need to kind of take it apart, clean it up and glue it together. And uh, the other thing is you need just a tray from a tote to kind of catch the drippings and everything, but uh, no additives in my chicken. And I'm telling you, those are beautiful looking chickens, aren't they? Now, when you're doing your own processing, you got to keep in mind, you know, all animals when they die they go through a rigor mortis process so either you do like what i did in this case we got home so late because we had to go somewhere um you just leave them in a cooler full of ice and they'll complete the rigor mortis process and then you uh when you bag them um they're ready to go when you take them out they're they're good to go but let's say you're in a hurry you need to get them in the freezer right away you just got to remember when you defrost them leave them in the fridge like an extra day and uh, that'll complete the process. You can do it at the beginning or the end, either way. Now, uh, this I use these bags, and they're not terribly expensive either. But these are from Texas Poultry. You get 50 bags. I'm probably going to go buy like 500 of these things now because I use them for my rabbits. I can put two of my three-pound rabbits in each bag, and then these some of these chickens, like in the back, those are probably after 
gutted and everything. They're about seven and a half pound chickens. They barely fit in these bags, but they do fit. You got to work it over and it'll work just fine. But uh, two rabbits is about six and a half pounds. So that's the way I do it. And it's a simple process. So, you know, once you get them uh, bagged like this, you take it off, you stick a straw. They come with these, uh, I don't know if that is polybutylene or something. These are um, like what you use for airlines, um, you know, for like a compressor or something. And you, you stick these uh, in the cavity, then you uh, close the bag up and zip tie it. And uh, when you put it in the hot water, um, obviously you put this end down in the hot water. In the end with the opening, you leave outside. And uh, as the bag shrinks, the air can escape. Now, if you don't hear an air escaping, that means you've got it jammed up too far inside the chicken. So you need to pull it just a little bit, let the air escape. And in the last second, after you feel like it's shrunk, and it's only in the hot water for like five, six seconds. Then you pull the zip tie out. I mean, and you pull this tube out and then you do the zip tie really tight. And uh, it's ready, ready to weigh and mark and then put in the freezer. Now, I usually put the weight of the chicken plus the date. And... Uh, like in this case, I've got, let me show you. In this case, I have uh, another layer at the very bottom here of chickens that I'm going to take out. And I'm going to put my fresh chickens all the way down at the bottom and so that I'm rotating my stock. And so I've got to do 20 chickens today. And I've got this emptied out enough. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get all 20 in here plus the amount that I've got in here already. And... Uh, I've also got, you know, like the chicken gizzards, hearts, and uh, livers, and then I've got uh, chicken feet and necks that I use for broth, and uh, so I've actually got to start using some of these up. Now, the chicken gizzards, hearts, and livers, that is for my dogs, so I need to pull some of those out, and we just kind of chop them up and uh, fry it for them, and that's a meal for them. They love it, so don't waste anything. All this stuff is perfectly good for you. Anyways, it takes a good amount of time to heat up this much water. That's probably like four gallons of water. And we're at 100, and, I'm sorry, I can't see this thing in the glare. We're at 133 and the temperature's gotta get to uh, 200 max. So it doesn't have that much longer, maybe another five minutes or so, but I keep the lid on here. And remember, a watch pot never boils. Not that we're trying to get this boiling, but it's gonna be pretty doggone close because boiling is 211 degrees. Now, I also use a, a heavy-duty glove. Let me get that. Now, I got these at uh, probably Home Depot. But uh, these will protect you for an incidental splashing or uh, you just dunk your finger in the hot water just a little bit. Uh, but it's not meant to be immersed, you know, for any length of time. But I use uh, safety equipment when I'm doing this stuff. So, anyways, I'm, uh, I got to go finish uh, putting the zip ties on a couple of these in a straw and I'll show you what it looks like when we shrink one up. It's a pretty pretty cool. Alright, so I only have two straws so usually what I do is I take four at a time out there to be able to do the uh, um, shrinking process. So you can see I've got the straw stuck in, I've got the zip tie there and uh, so as we shrink it we're going to make sure the air is coming out and then we pull the straw out the last second and then tighten up the zip tie. And uh, then I just stick the straw in the next two, put a zip tie on there, and away we go. But I wanted to just show you real quick the weight of uh, this thing. I'm going to have to set it down while I do this, though. So if you can see, that's 29 pounds for four chickens. And uh, that's just my normal scale that I use for, you know, for weighing ourselves. But uh, that's a lot of chicken. So anyways, uh, that's fully processed everything. No additives, no injections, no hormones, nothing. Just uh, do more 20% chick feed. All right, once you hit uh, 195, I usually turn off the uh, heat to the tank because that's close enough. And I can usually do about uh, four chickens, then I'll have to turn the heat back up to uh, keep it where we need it. So again, it only takes about five seconds, but you can see the uh, product as it's shrunk up and the straw is removed. That's pretty good. It removes the majority of the air in this thing, and uh, now I just got to do two more.
All right, so I got four of them done. All you really have to do now is uh, I just wipe the uh, side off that I'm going to mark, and I'll go put them on the scale individually and put today's date and the weight of each one of the chickens. And then they go straight into the freezer. All right, so what I do is I have our bathroom scale here, and I've got uh, eight chickens. I'm showing four right here, but uh, I've got to now date them, weigh them, and then mark the mark the weight on there and then stick them in the freezer so that's where i'm at let's see what we get all right so here's my uh, finish for the eight that i did yesterday so i have a five pound 5.6 5.6 6 pound 6.8 7 7 7 so that's pretty good for growing in your own backyard and uh, no fillers or anything so i love it all right, I'm down at my freezer trying to fit all the uh, chickens that I've got. So, uh, three, six, nine. So that's 12 chickens that I recently did. And then I still got to put all these back in. So these are the ones that I still have to put in from this. Uh, there's 11 more. And then I've still got these that are left over from the last time. So usually what I do is I put a feed bag in here to kind of divide it. All right, that freezer is full now. I forget how many I had here. Anyway, there's 20, there's probably over 30, 30 chickens that are minimum five pounds, probably average like six and a half pounds. And I can't even fit in some of my uh, chicken legs and gizzards and stuff. So I'm gonna bring these upstairs and go ahead and start using them up. But uh, I only have about 10 chickens left from December. So the rest of these are new. So I'm glad I didn't grow any more chickens because this is about as full as it can get. Anyways, that freezer will be working hard for the next uh, several hours to try to get those things frozen. Okay, so that's kind of it for uh, processing chickens. Uh, this is like everything I pieced together. I skipped the, uh, the parts that might have got people a little bit queasy, but this is now just like what you, if you're cooking your own chickens, you get an idea of uh, what you need to do. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. This, uh, I've probably done about 70 chickens now. And uh, I think I'll do some more in the fall, but you know, 30 chickens, that's gonna last me six months. And then I'm gonna have rabbits. Uh, I'll ha I've already got a whole bunch of rabbits. I gotta clean out of my freezer, get ready for the next batch, but uh, Grow your own protein. It's really not that difficult. You just got to dedicate some time. Okay, I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless.